Hey guys, another video for the how to playlist. If you've used an electric operated kerosene heater before, you probably want to move on, watch something else. But for those of you who haven't, and in my old country I hadn't, it's only in Japan I've experienced these things, uh, it, you might find it useful to get a bit of information on how to use these. So they're plugged into the electricity, they're operated with electricity, but the actual heat comes from kerosene. So the first thing you need to do is to fill the kerosene uh, cartridge or can, I guess you'd call it, it's a can. Take the top off, squeeze a little childproof type set in there, squeeze the buttons in and take the top off. And then they usually use pumps. So this little pump here is actually battery operated, it's an electric pump. Uh, sometimes or most commonly they have little hand pumps where you've got to squeeze, 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 squeeze. Very uncivilized. So for, <laughs> for about 500 yen you can buy these electric ones, clip it onto the can and then it has a little wire inside it and it you turn it on and it pumps across and then when the kerosene gets to the top the little sensor turns the little electric pump off again. So that's that's the best way Quite often people have the little squeeze pumps, but I mean these things are only about 500 yen for electric ones. So if you have to do this, and you probably have to do it every couple of days, depending on how much you use your heater, um, every two or three days, so worth getting one of these little electric ones. As you can see, it gets to the top, and it'll turn itself off. Just make sure you have got to turn itself off one <laughs> before you go walking away from it. And then just pull it out of the kerosene and let it drain from that tube. Just wait a moment till it finishes draining from the tube before you pull it out. Otherwise, you'll pull out a big bunch of kero and pour kerosene around the place. So most houses in Japan or most apartments in Japan have air conditioners. But if you live in a cold part of Japan, these things are the only way to, to really heat the place properly. I really resisted. We've got air conditioning and we've got electric heaters and I was hoping we could get by with just them but if you live in a big place um, or in a really cold part of Japan they just aren't enough usually. The air conditioners and the and the electric heaters just aren't enough. The, these things put out enough heat to really heat a room so you know it's sort of not always the case I mean air conditioners are quite if, if you live in a small place and it's not super cold outside you can get away with it but you can see there that settings the, the heat is set to 20 degrees and the rooms at 7 in the middle of the day so it's got to bring got to bring the room up 13 degrees so yeah it's pretty hard work for an air conditioner to do that and electric heaters just don't cut it in the colder parts of Japan they just don't do it so you can see the flame. So electric operated, so you push the button to turn it on and off it goes. It, it starts itself, you don't have to do anything. So they're really simple to use. See that went up one degree already in a few seconds, so they're really good. And see they're reducing, reducing the temperature we want, increasing the temperature we want. It's that simple, that's all you really need to do. Start it. Just showing you what it does when it starts. So yeah, the the music thing, it's got a timer in it, and every thirty minutes it'll play the music, and you've got to uh, push the button to keep it going. It's for safety, so if you go out and leave it turned on, it'll turn itself off. You can override that, but uh, it's better not to. So here it is, it's saying, please push the reset button. So you can see the red light flashing, just push that, and that resets it. So you can change that setting, you can make it 30 minutes or an hour or whatever. So the other thing I've got in them is an earthquake sensor, so if there's an earthquake, they'll shut down too. 
and you've got to push the reset button to get them started again. So they're for safety. You can override them, but um, probably better not to. You know. Oh, the other thing is, you've got to make sure that you've got uh, fresh air coming in through somewhere, so a window open a crack or something. You don't want to run one of those in a small room without any fresh air coming in because uh, they're a flame and they'll suck all the oxygen out of the room. So anyway, I hope someone found that useful, or hope someone will find that useful. More videos coming soon.